there is a lot of bad information about the real estate market that's being given right now. In most cases, it's being given as opinion rather than backed up by facts. Now, for the last year and a half, I've seen countless people with rather large followings talking about how the market was going to crash. In all honesty, at what point do they have to atone for their lies, pandering, and while they're misleading? The best way to sum these guys up is equating them to the saying that a broken clock is, well, right twice a day. Yes, there are some markets around the country that have gone down, but as a whole, the real estate market just took some of the biggest blows and is going to come out of 2023 looking, well, okay. Let's take a look at some of the things that these market crashers are claiming that are lies. We will examine the issue and then see what the stats actually have to say. Now, as we look at this all, remember that real estate's local. What's going on in one market does not mean that it's going to happen in another market. Talking about the national real estate market is as dumb as talking about the national average temperature. It means nothing. Real quick, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any real estate questions, then know I am here to help. So if you have been around the block this year, then most likely you've heard the term date the rate and marry the house. Now, this guy in particular is saying that this is a massive lie and that it's a dumb concept. But let's look at this a little further. Now, if someone says this to you, then they are implying that you buy the house today and lock in today's price of that house. Then as rates go down, you're going to be able to refinance the house and essentially have your cake and eat it too. If rates don't come down, and God forbid they go up, then you've locked in your payment at the lower rate and, well, look like a genius. If rates go down, then you refinance and, well, look like a genius. The only way this scenario doesn't work out for you is if home prices go down, which, to be clear, is a possibility if you live in some areas of the country. Not great advice if you live in Austin, Texas, where housing prices have gone down by 8.2% year-to-date, or New Orleans, where prices have gone down 9%. But well, we're going to go into home prices going down in a couple of moments. But for the vast majority of home buyers, this was some pretty solid advice. Now, it's been a pretty big move for folks who bought back in October at 8%. At 8% on a $500,000 note, that's a principal and interest payment of $3,668. That payment goes down to $3,160 at 6.5%. That's real money. But keep in mind that there are costs that are associated with refinancing a mortgage. So refinancing each time rates go down a small amount does not make sense. The rule of thumb is 1% or more for a rate decrease. Now, the naysayers were always saying that it's all about if rates go down. Well, they did. Now it's just a matter of how much they're going to go down. I don't see them going below the high 5% level, but that's just me. Time will tell. So they all told you that date the rate was a load of crap. It happened. Rates went down. So I guess they're the ones that were full of, well, that. So as this guy was grasping for straws, talking about how dating the rate is a lie, he mentioned the great your house payment goes down $500 a month, but your cost of owning a home will actually go up as things like property taxes and insurance get more expensive. Hey, guy, rent prices go up and up and up each and every year. There's no such thing as blocking in your rental rate for 30 years. Don't take my word for it. Take a look at this chart. You see, when things like property taxes and insurance go up, landlords just pass those costs along to the consumer. In other words, unless you're living in your parents' basement or are living in a situation where you don't have to pay anything, then it's really you, the tenant, that's actually paying for the higher insurance and property tax. Plus... There's the added insult to injury that you as a renter can't write off the property tax like I as a homeowner can. So let's talk about home prices because the market crash clickbait fellas love talking about market prices, but rarely do they bring the receipts. It is a fact that there are some towns in the United States that are seeing year-over-year -year housing price declines. It's also a fact that it's the exception, not the rule. First, month-over-month -month pricing data, it doesn't matter. Housing prices follow a trend with there being yearly seasonal peaks in pricing with seasonal low points as well. So the only stat that really matters is the year-over-year -year data. Let's do a slow scroll of this data chart of the 50 largest metro area housing markets and examine a couple of towns. Yes, like I said earlier, home prices have gone down in Austin, Texas, and New Orleans. Next would be San Antonio, Texas, which has seen prices go down 3% this year, then Jacksonville, Florida which is at negative 1.5%, then Memphis, Houston, and Dallas, 
and negative 0.9% year over year. Should we go over all the metros with negative home prices this year? Just stick with me for a second. Phoenix at negative 0.3%, Sacramento at negative 0.1%, Vegas at negative 0.4%, Nashville at negative 0.3%. Oh, well, I guess that didn't take too long. The real pain would have been if we went through the list and I listed all the metro areas that had housing price gains year over year. Here's a fun fact. Only 11 out of the 50 metro areas had negative pricing. And of that 11, only four saw home prices go down by more than 1% this year. A lot of people sat on the sidelines because of a lot of bad information this year. The majority of folks who sat on the sidelines didn't lose 11.3% of their buying power like a buyer in Hartford would have. But all in all, 33 of the 50 had home price gains of 1% or more in 2023. So we had a year and a half of being the markets going to crash from, only to have the market not crash. But now they are chirping about how whole prices are going to go down because we could possibly enter a recession in 2024. Okay, what's the correlation between recession and housing prices? Housing prices have gone down in two out of the last six recessions, too. We all know and remember the slaughter fest of 2008, but the only other time that housing prices went down in a recession was back in 1991, when they went down by 1.9%. Ugh, that seems like a rather not event to me. So based on these stats, can we agree that it is a fact that housing prices and recessions are not correlated? Now, let's do my favorite. How they talk about how housing prices are going down because sales levels have hit a 13-year low. Well, sales levels and prices are not necessarily correlated. This year has proved that. The amount of supply of houses on the market and prices are correlated. However, here is some Massachusetts data to help prove that point. Here's a chart of declining year-over-year -year sales data. Now, that is 29 consecutive months of year-over-year -year sales declines in the state of Massachusetts. And this is the chart for year-over-year -year pricing in Massachusetts. Yes, sales have been down for 29 consecutive months, while prices have been up for 42. And for the record, the 43rd month was a decrease of 0.06%. It was in May of 2020, essentially, those are the sales right in the beginning of the COVID lockdown. Again, this is Massachusetts pricing levels, but there is zero correlation between sales levels and pricing. Look at what happened with pricing in 2008 and 2009, and then compare that to a snapshot of our inventory levels. Go find these numbers in your area because that is going to be your telling sign of where the market's headed. We have 4.4 fewer times houses on the market compared to 2009 and nearly five times fewer than compared to 2010. Again, myth busted. It's the amount of supply in the market that correlates with housing prices, not the amount of sales. Here's the proper advice. Buy when you're ready. Stop trying to time the market. You're going to lose. Buy a house that you can afford. Don't stretch. Buy for a longer period of time. Think five or seven years. Buy a house that you can grow into. In other words, if you're expecting a couple kids in the next couple of years, then don't buy a two-bedroom house. All my contact information, it's in the description below, or you can reach out to me at youtuberealestateagent.com with any questions. Until next time.